Hey, welcome back to Kira's Workshop. Today, we are wrapping up the mini-series of the Ashleys for the But Make It Fashion segment. I told you this was a micro mini-series, so last time I made Ashley A and B. Naturally, and following the alphabetical order, today I'm making Q and T. According to the internet, Ashley Q or Ashley Quinland is the subbiest of them all and seems to be Spinelli's biggest enemy. She's of Irish ancestry, so that kind of explains the redhead, and her signature color is blue, with some black accents. And at last, Ashley T or Ashley Thomasine, which unlikely to the others, is very quiet, but is considered to be the smartest of the group. That could explain the nerdy looking outfit though. She is tall and slender, has a light brown skin and curly brunette hair, and her signature color is green. She kinda looks Latin American if you ask me, but I couldn't find any sources that confirm that. So without further ado, let's make this fashion. I was about to use another Michelle memory doll for Ashley Q, until I remembered. Wait, Holly and Poppy of her are already gingers, and I had one reboot Holly doll laying around without purpose in her life, so she's the perfect candidate. To begin, I wanted to add some freckles. I'm doing this first because realistically, freckles tone down underneath the makeup. First, I added some with a light brown watercolor pencil, and later, gently, add some more with different shades of brown. Once done, I'll start with the brows using a terracotta pastel. I honestly don't know what people dislike so much the reboot ever after high dolls. They're beautiful and their heads are so much more stylized. I just hated those ridiculous original round heads. I gave Ashley A blue eyes, B brown, and Q will have green eyes, to contrast with her hair. Her makeup consists on red lipstick and blue graphic liner. Later, add some blue pastel with white on the inner corner to make a gradient. Off camera, I'll fill the scleras with white, some blush on her cheeks and nose, and with black pastel, I make a little bit darker the color of the eyeliner. Later, add the pupils. And the catch lights. Since she has a very pale complexion, I'll use my pearl highlighter on the nose and cheeks. The base for Ashley T was a tricky one due to her deeper skin tone, but then I found this Melody Piper doll deep inside my stock box, match made in the Mattel fabric. First, the brows, with a chocolate color pastel. I think that Melody has the most gorgeous face mold of all the other After High dolls. Her skin color is amazing, her lips are so plumped, and that nose. Oh my god, that nose. For this makeup, I'll draw a green wing liner. With a combo of green smoky eye and nude lips. That lip color is giving me the Kardashian realness. I'll also add some green on the lower lids. And off camera, I'll paint the scleras. Since I ran out of eye colors, T is having light brown too. I'm playing with a few shades to give them texture. and later add the pupils. Give them the black shadow with pastel and add the catch lights. And just like all the dolls with a deeper skin complexion, I'll highlight with golden powder. Then 
This is the mood board for Ashley Q. I want her to be very romantic and elegant. Began by making this semicircular skirt, the same way I did the Ashley B one. But this time the darts are on the waistline. Cut it on a navy blue polka dot fabric. And here it is! Fits like a glove on the waist. And it's very puffy on the bottom. This skirt has a very Disney princess silhouette, and I love it. For the top, I want her to have a basic white sweater. Kira tip. Make a basic top pattern. You can use the tape method. This pattern will definitely help you to create any other pattern you want. What I did is that, since the curve of the chest forces you to add darts to the front, I simply sanded down one side of the doll's chest. This way I made a flat pattern, with no darts needed. I use this basic flat pattern for everything on this series, tops, dresses and coats. Now I transform the basic pattern into a sweater, and well I also have a basic sleeve one. For the sweater fabric I grabbed this baby bodysuit, that is very stretchy and it also has this very cool cardigan finish, ideal for a doll size sweater. Now, my idea was to make a normal sweater, and tuck it on the skirt, but the skirt was so fitted that with the sweater on the skirt couldn't close. So, if it's too long, crop it. I made this second cropped sweater that looks really good, and added that black color that Ashley Q has. For her coat I make these patterns, front, back and the lapel. I cut it on a baby blue fabric. But the fit wasn't very good. And the lapel was very tiny. So I repeat everything one more time. And here you have it. A perfectly fitted coat. For the creations, I'll glue on some rhinestones as buttons. For the shoes, I grab these basic pumps that I once painted black and now paint them red. For Ashley T, I wanted to make the same silhouette, kind of like a long sweater dress. For the dress, I used my basic pattern again, made it longer, and played with color block on the sleeves. Sew everything with my sewing machine, and add snaps on the back. And here it is. The design I chose for this had some gather tool on the bottom, so I thought it would look nice if I keep it on my version. Off camera, I'll sew on the collar. For the shoes, I took these scary screen Mary jeans that once belonged to my seller Neptune doll, that, well, she's no more. And I'll paint them beige. After adding some details, I have these very nice shoes, but I was missing the sparkle. So I'll cover the heels with glue, and add golden glitter. All these dolls have coats, and she's not the exception. So I took Ashley Q's coat pattern and transformed it into a trench cape. The lapel for this is more stylized. And to make it a cape I got rid of the armhole, so now the shoulder is longer. I sew this shoulder to shoulder and then from the sides. And this is my first attempt. Lots of trial and error for these dolls. 
The bottom of the cape is very sloppy. The stitching on the lapel is very bad, even though I made it with my machine. The back part looks really good though. And a little tip. What I did is that I sewed the lapel's bad side to the cape's good side. So when you fold it, you hide the seam and get a very clean finish on the front. Of course this cape was a complete fail, so I made another one. This time around, the front looks cleaner and has a better fit. Decided to hand stitch the lapels and wow, what a change. The back, mmm, beginner's luck for the first attempt. It's not better, but it's not a mess. And I also decided to add decorative stitching on the shoulders. To give it the trench look, I'll glue on some rhinestone buttons and paint them brown. And we are finally done! What a journey this was! Making 4 dolls in one month with functional clothes was a real challenge, but now I feel more secure about my sewing skills and pattern making. What do you think about these girls? Now that the group is complete, which one is your favorite? A few of you agreed that Spinelli needs to be a part of this, and she will join the girls, so stay tuned! And as always, don't forget to support the workshop by liking this video. Remember that sharing is caring, subscribe if you haven't, and turn on your notifications. Next episode of But Make It Fashion is moving like a castle. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next time. Hero out.